Hey guys, what's up? It's Tom again, back with another video. It's been some time since I checked out AirVPN and the tier list itself has evolved and grown in the system itself. We had the application analysis, updates to streaming compatibility and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and review AirVPN in 2020. <laughs> And it was formerly a tier one VPN provider kind of at the end of tier one. Um, but now let's see if it can hold up to the other VPNs in terms of the updated ranking system. So we're looking here at the pricing system. We see that it's around $2.32 for three days. One month is actually $8.13. Six months is $33. One year is $56 and so on. I do think this pricing model is very consumer friendly. It gives you different options for the price and each one makes sense. You're getting a little bit of a discount here for three years, but one month is still affordable. If NordVPN wanted to learn something, um, which they probably don't because they just don't really seem receptive to feedback whatsoever, they could take a page out of AirVPN's book and make their one month plan around this price and keep the three year plan maybe around uh, $114. This is a very good pricing plan and it's very consumer friendly. There's no fake sales, no fake timers, no push to get you to purchase three years when the one month is perfectly affordable. It could be a little bit cheaper per month or per year perhaps, especially since it doesn't really work that well with streaming compatibility. It's a little bit surpassed by other things like Wii VPN that has streaming compatibility with a $5 a month and $30 a year. It's also surpassed by stuff like Tour Guard, which is $5 a month or $30 a year. It's not as streaming friendly since that's not the streaming bundle plan, but that still does include some things that WeVPN doesn't, like the BitTorrent proxy, some of the extensions and stuff like that, as well as port forwarding, which is nice. Um, so those are some other options, but today we're focusing on AirVPN, of course. Just wanted to mention those as well, because I do think it is a little bit surpassed by some of those options, but still a very good pricing plan itself. And you can also pay with a variety of different options as well, which is nice. I do also like how they provide a three day trial, although I think it could be a little bit cheaper since it's only for three days. Maybe something like 50 cents to a dollar would make more sense to me. Although right now that's the, the plan I'm actually using to test out AirVPN. So AirVPN is kind of a mixed bag here for me now in 2020. Uh, last year, I gave it very high scores for its application since it's very customizable and extremely, extremely customizable when I say that. Probably more customizable than any other VPN out there, but so much so, I think it's actually a detriment in some cases. Now here on the channel, you've never really heard me say that, but I do think that AirVPN with its Eddy open source client is kind of a different story. Now, don't get me wrong, it does a lot of good things here and has a lot of cool features. Take for example, the fact that it has zero trackers in the Android application, zero trackers on their website. Not only that, but Eddy is completely open source, which is very, very transparent and really, really cool. AirVPN, the company itself is very transparent as well and it has a good reputation, but we'll discuss that a little bit more later. But when we're talking purely about the application, I do think that some of the complexities and some of the customization does kind of get kind of confusing. That's because some of the standard stuff you're going to be wanting to do is a little bit tricky within the application. It has some pretty good stuff like a network kill switch, which is pretty easy to configure with network lock and lots of customization here to um, configured. However, stuff like dedicated IP support is not really within the application, pretty much from the team's specific choice not to include it. Ike v2 is also not supported within the supported protocols on the application. That said, um, you know, I'm going to actually put this to yes because you can't specifically kind of swap ports. But I mean, look here, you can specifically change the ports with different protocol options, different kind of combinations of options. And you don't really see this with any other VPN provider. It's actually pretty nuts how many different kind of combinations of ports and the UDP open VPN you can configure. That said, it doesn't support Ike V2, which is kind of a bummer since that gives you really fast connection times. And you know, stuff like WireGuard is also not supported yet either. AirVPN itself is not against WireGuard, but they said it, they didn't think it was ready sometime last year. And I haven't seen any indication that it's coming that soon. So maybe in the future, they'll probably add it um, to Eddie. Maybe it'll take more work and stuff um, because it's kind of like, um, they kind of, I don't know, I, I don't know. But you know, it also does kind of have some weird features like ad blocking. You can ad block through adding an ad blocking DNS, 
but it's not like it gives you an ad blocking DNS, something like TorGuard does, or just has some kind of ad blocking feature like something like Winscribe, Perfect Privacy, or some of these other ones that kind of make their own ad blocking service within the application. Um, of course, you could just use something like uBlock Origin or something like that if you want to, but it's still something that is a little bit clunky to do within the application, having to add your own ad blocking DNS. Stuff like split tunneling can also be kind of achieved with weird ways, and I honestly haven't really figured it out yet. Um, there is like a way to blacklist certain websites, I think through the routing table or blacklist um, whitelist and do different things with uh, different programs and stuff like that. I couldn't really figure it out, which is kind of a bummer because other applications like WeVPN, ExpressVPN make it much easier to split tunnel. So I'm just kind of giving those like yellow marks here because it's, it's possible, I think, but for most people who aren't extremely, extremely advanced with VPN, it's gonna be a little bit tricky. We do see cool things though, like proxy support with really good options here to configure. Um, so that's nice. I couldn't find any observation options within the application, but we do have nice things like a really good DNS customization. Like I said before, you could customize the port with the different protocol options. We don't have a couple things like script support and server favoriting, which is kind of weird. You think you would be able to favorite one of these servers, but I couldn't find a way to do that. It does give you really nice options though to um, see different stats on the servers, probably better than most any other application out there, which is nice and transparent and really cool. You can switch servers pretty easily when you're connected by just clicking on another one and you can view the settings as well while connected, which is nice. One of the downsides though about AirVPN, I think, is that it doesn't include a BitTorrent proxy. Now, a lot of these things when I'm reviewing this application itself, it took me quite a long time to fill out this table, just doing some research about the application and stuff like that. Some of these things, I'm not even 100% sure if I filled it out correctly, which is just an indication of how you know, advanced or how confusing this application is. And that's kind of what I was discussing in the beginning. Most of the stuff I just kind of had to, I mean, search on Google, look in forums and try to figure out what was going on because the website itself doesn't really give you that many um, information easily to be able to find this stuff. So that's kind of what I'm talking about here. Overall guys, AirVPN, it's really customizable, perhaps the most customizable application out there in terms of VPN. And it does some things really good, like being trustworthy and transparent and having pretty cool, powerful customization. However, I do think some of the complexity is a little bit too much. For most people who are gonna be using VPN, I would say for maybe 80, 90% of people, this is a little too much. And some of that complexity makes the application difficult to use with this really, really steep learning curve. Now, if you're a really advanced user and you can take advantage of all these different customization things like I talked about, it's gonna be a pretty good application and probably one of the better ones out there. Anyways, guys, that's about it for that detailed app analysis of AirVPN. So let's go ahead and do that speed test. We are connected to a um, fastest server apparently for Air VPN. Normally without VPN, I get around 3 MS here, a thousand for megabits per second. Upload rate is pretty high as well, maybe 800 to a thousand. So very strong there as well. Um, this is an okay speed test. You know, lately I've been finding that more and more speed tests are not really even accurate at all, um, you know, for the speeds that you can get. Um, Air VPN has always been a pretty fast VPN. So we're gonna have to do the torrent test to see what kind of speed we can get while doing that. Um, but you know, this is just kind of meh. All right, so we are connected to torrenting, um, downloading the Ubuntu file, and then we're gonna see what kind of speeds we can get. Um, right now it's kind of going between 14 to 20, um, which would be a little bit faster than average, but nothing too special. Nowadays, I'm looking more for 40 plus, especially with WireGuard implementation. AirVPN has expressed some hesitation about WireGuard being good for privacy. Um, so they're probably still working on that, trying to figure out how to do that when it's fully ready for full use. Although lately this year, I've just seen more and more VPNs pumping out WireGuard. So I think maybe they're a little bit slow here to implement it. Um, oh, but you know, these speeds, they're nothing too special, you know, currently. I've been getting a lot better speeds with other VPN providers, TorGuard, WeVPN, some other VPNs out there lately have been blazing fast. Um, and these speeds just, you know, they're not really cutting it for me too much anymore, unfortunately. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and talk about some of the few remaining categories with AirVPN, namely reputation. I think AirVPN is a very trusted VPN provider and for good reason. It's very transparent on the forums, explaining why they do things, explaining maybe why they don't want to add some features or something like that. Um, 
allowing time for things to be matured and stuff like that. I mean, the client itself is open source. The company doesn't have any trackers on the website or the Android application, which is kind of what I talked about um, you know, earlier in terms of that um, application analysis, but it's also a little bit of reputation in considering you know, what the company is able to maintain a type shit about in terms of privacy and reputation and stuff like that. They clearly do value privacy and stuff like that as well. They're not trying to buy out the entire industry of VPN reviewers, which something like NordVPN, ExpressVPN, some of the other VPNs that just like to throw money around to get people to recommend their product. AirVPN itself has never paid for any reviews, which is really, really nice. And you don't really see any other VPN really being able to say the same thing. Um, so they are very transparent and reputable. There hasn't been any case of logs being collected or anything like that. So they're a perfect no logging VPN. Overall, there hasn't been any other PR scandals or anything like that um, with company management or weird people owning the company. It's always just been straight to the point. AirVPN, it's pretty much been the same since its inception for better or worse. You know, some of those things like I talked about in the application, uh, you know, and some of the, the overall kind of product itself does feel its age a little bit nowadays. And we'll be talking about that a little bit more in a bit, but overall reputation, pretty damn good for a VPN provider, I think. Next up, we could talk about customer support, and this is where AirVPN, you know, might be feeling its age a little bit. It's never really had live chat on the website, which is definitely a bummer if you want to get very quick support. Um, however, the support on the website isn't too bad. Usually you'll get a response within a day or two, so that's not bad. Support's pretty helpful. Um, a huge bonus here, I think, is the active forum community. It has a lot of threads, a lot of answers there. Um, the only bad thing is, is that I do think the application has such a big learning curve and there probably could be a little bit more implementation in the app to help you figure out how to use it. Um, perhaps more video tutorials or something like that. Having live chat would be helpful in learning the application, some tech support agents to help you learn that. But, you know, overall, I do think live chat would be huge here, but unfortunately they don't have it. Lastly, we could talk about streaming compatibility, and this is something, uh, another little bit of a letdown in the fact that AirVPN has, you know, been feeling its age. You know, it's been one of the first VPN providers coming around, you know, 2013, kind of in that era. It was really kind of, you know, I think maybe reaching its kind of, uh, you know, full potential. It was pretty popular back then, I think, you know, it was more of an equal marketplace, I think. And some of the features and stuff that AirVPN hasn't really fully adapted to this day, for example, would be probably the streaming compatibility. Um, it really only does work with like Netflix, which isn't too bad. Um, you know, you can get it to unblock the USA version of Netflix and stuff like that, which is pretty cool, especially for the price. Um, so it does work with that, which is nice. I think just because it's a smaller VPN provider it hasn't really managed to, um, you know, flag Netflix or something for their IPs. I'm not sure why that is. Maybe people on AirVPN aren't really using it for that reason too much. Um, but they don't really have a dedicated response to making sure that it does work in the future. Not only that, but I discovered proxy errors with stuff like Hulu, Amazon Prime, BBC iPlayer also wasn't working, which is definitely a bummer. So if you're looking for full streaming compatibility, this one is probably not gonna be the right one for you. So guys, the final score for AirVPN is gonna be a 3.45, making it a more accurate um, score in the current tier list. Things have gotten stricter and more critical since the last review, which is how things should work. A lot of VPNs are getting kind of ranked down lately, which is a good thing in my opinion. The more accurate and critical, the better. Now, what has changed for AirVPN? Well, I think the speeds are not quite as impressive as they used to be, mainly because a lot of VPNs are getting faster and having better protocols to use like WireGuard. We don't see that with AirVPN, and the speeds just weren't impressive enough for me lately. However, reputation is still unchanged. They're a great VPN in terms of the reputation, no logs, open source, very transparent, no trackers, a fair affiliate commission model, um, no buying out reviews, no history of leaks or anything like that. So very solid there, of course. And support, I gave a little bit of a bump because they have such a good forum community, very active, very um, good responses from the team there, which is kind of unusual. Streaming got a little bit of a downgrade. It was working with Hulu last time. I couldn't get it working this time. And overall, the application, it was kind of a mixed bag for me because in some ways I have to give it a pretty good score, four out of five, because there isn't really any other application like that. It's 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 so customizable um, and feature rich in some ways, having things that another VPN has, but in terms of application analysis, it is missing some stuff like IV2, WireGuard, um, some other things like server favoriting, for example, 
Um, so it's missing some things that other VPNs do have, and it has things other VPNs don't have. I also think the learning curve is pretty intense. Um, for anyone trying to use it, it might take you a month or two to even fully learn how to use it. And some of the features that you can use with it are a little bit trickier than other VPNs, like split tunneling and stuff like that. You're going to have to do through blacklist routing and stuff, I think, like that. So it's a little bit tricky there. I do give it a good score, though. I just want to give you guys that kind of caveat there because um, I think that's pretty fair. So that's my final thoughts on Air VPN. Here on the channel, it's it's really been one of those VPNs that I kind of use as an example when I'm talking about reputation and transparency and what VPNs should strive for. I think Air VPN is almost perfect in that regard. And a lot of VPNs could learn from that kind of model they have and the trustworthy um, nature of the company itself. But I think Air VPN could learn from other VPNs, especially in terms of stuff like usability, accessibility, um, maybe even um, some uh, form of live chat would be nice, more streaming compatibility, more implementation of the newest protocols, bumping up speeds a little bit, having a little bit more servers would be nice as well. I noticed some of the servers weren't there for my location to get you know the best speeds. So those things would be nice, a little bit of more of a modern upgrade, a little bit more of an overhaul, maybe overhaul the website even, the application looks a little dated as well. Um, but you know, that's my final thoughts on AirVPN. A little bit sad here that I'm taking it down from tier one because it does do a lot of things I think is almost perfect. I just think as an overall average score, this one is gonna be more accurate for most people. And that's what the tier list is all about, making each score important and letting people decide exactly what's important for their VPN uses. All right guys, thanks for checking out this review and I'll see you in the next one very soon.